Um, this guy is actually coming back, which is good. I know he's very small and humble, but he's making a comeback right now, so that's good. <laughs> Same thing for this, like, oh gosh, hang in there, buddy, because things are gonna get better. Okay, so right now I am working on a project for my husband. It is called the Rift Sweater. It is by, I wanna say it's by um, Jared Flood from Brooklyn Tweed. Let me double check, don't quote me on that just yet. Yeah, by Jared Flood from Brooklyn Tweed. It is this sweater right here, you can see really really cool sweater i um dyed up a color special for this sweater it is this one right here i haven't talked about this yet or shown any pictures of this yet on instagram but i do plan on talking about this on the next episode of the podcast but right now that's what i'm working on i'm really proud of myself because i completed a gauge swatch and it's a perfect let me pull this out of my little drawer here it's a perfect four by four square after blocking like here my knitter's rule and gauge ruler and it fits hard to see it hard to hold it but it does fit and I'm really happy that I made a full on gauge swatch blocked it and everything especially because it's for Brandon I want it to fit really really well hi you want to say hi hi say hi, hi. Anyway, that's what I'm working on right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, so something that I use for my patterns that is worth sharing and you may or may not be familiar with it, it's an app called called Knit Companion. And um, let me go ahead and show you, I'm gonna open it up and just show you what it looks like, but it's a really excellent app for kind of storing all your knitting patterns and working from your knitting patterns if you have like an iPad or a tablet or something. Okay, so here it is. This is kind of what it looks like um, on your local screen. So you have, a like a local screen a screen that shows you what you have oops, on Ravelry that you can um, once it loads up you can kind of go through like what you have in your Ravel Ravelry library and it connects to it here and then um, if you have anything connected to Dropbox they have a thing for that too but um, like for example let's say you have something in your library that you want to cast on so maybe it's you know the, the break cap so I can open it up and then I just choose which ver version I want and um, I would do this one, oh, not that one, this one here. It would load it up for me and then close out of that. And then I could go to my local screen and the break cap will then appear in my local screen, probably towards the bottom since, or yeah. let's see, where is it? Sometimes it takes a minute for them to load up into your, yeah, it's right there. Oh, and I downloaded the Danish version on, by mistake, but um, it's there. If you want to start your project, you just hit start project, give it a name, and then you can do things like take notes on the pattern, um, and it's really cool. It's just a really great way to organize all your patterns. Um, I would kind of show you more specifically, but I don't want to you know, put any patterns on here, but it is a really cool place to organize all your patterns. You have um, counters, row counters, repeat counters. You can even have like the Apple Pencil, you can use that to write notes on your pattern and it saves it for you. It's just a really awesome um, resource. So it's called Knit Companion and you can download it in your app store, but definitely give it a shot because it, it connects to all of your Ravelry patterns and just makes it really easy to have everything in one place. Good morning. I am outside right now, kind of walking around the yard thinking about some things that I need to do out here. I've got some coffee that I'm finishing up. Um, it's a little bit of a breezy day, so you might get some wind sounds on the camera. I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, I'm just doing kind of like my morning walk um, around the yard. I like to come out here in the mornings and just kind of check things out uh, plant-wise. Now that it's spring, we have a lot more things growing. Um, I've planted seeds and those are starting to take, but it's also just an opportunity for me to get out into the fresh air. And I do this all the time, like, you know, even when 
we're not kind of holed up at home. I come out here just because I feel like I'm doing something productive by walking around and checking things out. But at the same time, I uh, am just getting some fresh air, stepping outside for a minute and just breathing it in. Um, yeah, so that is what I'm doing right now. This is day two with um, the whole, you know, social distancing thing going on right now with my husband being home, no school. Uh, there's really not a lot going on in town to begin with. Uh, like maybe you have heard the Las Vegas Strip is pretty much shut down. We took a drive last night and I didn't film it only because um, it was like seven o'clock at night and we didn't want to make it a big thing because we wanted to get back in time to get the kids to bed. But we needed to get out and just kind of be out for a little while. So we just drove, we didn't get out of the car or anything like that but it was strange driving down the Las Vegas Strip and being there's all these bright lights and these giant screens um, with these advertisements flashing and just you imagine all of this like fanfare going on but there were like no people <laughs> and so it seemed so artificial and um, trivial I guess so that was crazy strange um, but yeah so we're just you know hanging out at home today <laughs> Like, like most of us and trying to figure out some things that we can do I'm thinking that today it's it's kind of cloudy and really like chilly um, there's sun, like blue sky this direction but over behind me here it's real dark gray clouds um, so I don't know how much work I'm gonna do out in the garden today uh, we'll see because when it's windy that can make things a little bit challenging but um but yeah, we'll kind of do something. I want to start a new sourdough starter. I was making a lot of sourdough bread over the summer, last summer, and um, I kind of stopped once the school year started because my husband was working and it was a little bit more difficult to kind of keep it up. So I got rid of my starter, which I know that's like blasphemous. Like, why would I have done that? But I did, whatever, it's done, who cares? <laughs> um, but I'm gonna start a new one because I'm thinking with this time, you know, not knowing if I'm gonna be able to pick up like a loaf of bread at the store, if things are gonna be stocked or whatever. I figure why not just use my sourdough skills and make some sourdough bread. I'm also thinking about doing some, um, maybe some Irish soda bread. Uh, it's St. Patrick's Day, by the way. So happy St. Patrick's Day. I have a feeling this will be uploaded after St. Patrick's Day, maybe tomorrow, but um, yeah. So maybe I'll do that. So today I think I'm gonna do my sourdough starter. I have some work I need to do in the dye studio. Um, I have an update coming this Saturday. So yeah, things that need to be done, you know, kind of carrying on with our day as much as we can. And, and that's cool and that's good. The kids are doing great. My son has, my oldest son has Legos that he's really into and my littlest, he likes to try to play around with the Legos too. So they're doing really good, but we're trying to find little things for them to do as well. Um, but yeah, so I'll go ahead and give you a little quick tour of my humble little garden that's just beginning to grow um, now that spring is almost officially here. And, uh, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do with the rest of our day. This area right over here is kind of where I have my, what's going to be my vegetable garden. Um, I have tomatoes going over here. So we have tomatoes, tomatoes, and alongside the tomatoes are bean sprouts, uh, like sugar snap peas, I sh or uh, yeah, sugar snap pea sprouts. And then in these two containers here are strawberries. This uh, sink right here has rosemary that's doing really well, very hearty rosemary, but then there's some basil plants along the rosemary that I don't think are doing that great because I think they're getting too much water and I'll show you kind of that situation. But we have drilled holes in the side of the sink, but we've had so much rain and those basil plants that were in there are so young that I just don't think they could hold up with all the water. And then over here, down here we have this amazing herb garden. Um, I'm really excited about how well this is doing. Uh, oops, excuse me. Um, yeah, really, really healthy collection of herbs. So this is my dill and my husband and I tease uh, or joke that it's kind of a big dill <laughs> because it's huge. Like the stalk of the dill, if I get in there, like just look at that. That's like the size of a, like a giant stalk of asparagus. It's really beautiful. So, and, and very, very aromatic. Like you can pull little fronds off and it's, ugh, oh, it smells so good. This is thyme and this is sage, tarragon, cilantro, which is going nuts. I just trimmed it the other day. This is also thyme. It's a different kind of thyme and I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, um, but yeah, it's a little bit different. And this, you know what? Actually, I might be wrong. Maybe this is, hold on. 
No, you know what? That's, I think, oregano. And then this. Oh, goodness, I don't know. Now I feel like I'm really showing my true colors in terms of herbs. But anyway, regardless, um, they're all beautiful and doing really, really well. Up here on these other two levels are um, what look like very humble bell pepper plants. Now there's a story as to why they look the way they do. They were actually, um, they used to be over here in this garden bed over here, but they needed to be transplanted um, because I wanted to kind of reorganize my layout. And so I ended up transplanting them over here and when I had transplanted them, it was after our frost and they were still okay, but they weren't doing great. They weren't thriving. And so I wanted to see if I could bring them back. And honestly, like, I'm not 100% sure how this little guy's gonna do, but he's sprouting um, new leaves that you can see here. So I'm thinking that with the sunshine and the warmth, like you can see right down here, there's some new stuff coming that I think he's gonna be fine. I think he's gonna make a full comeback. This one is on the road to recovery. He's doing really well. Um, this guy right here is similar to the first guy. He's still kind of, um, getting himself back together, I guess you could say, but he's coming. He's looking like he's going to make a full recovery as well because I am seeing lots of new growth down here. Now I fertilize with, um, this really nice, uh, fertilizer that I get from Star Nursery here in town. It's called, uh, Gold Dust. And then I use an organic, um, vegetable fertilizer as well. I have like two to three times a week, especially in these early stages. Uh, so that's kind of what I've been doing over here. Now, this plant over here is, and you can see he's got a little bell pepper growing. Also a very young plant, but definitely, you know, making a comeback here. And before he didn't have any of these little leaves going over here, but now he's starting to, to kind of green up a little bit down there. I'm just gonna adjust my camera so you can see. And then over here, some more bell pepper plants. This one is also doing really well, um, really thriving in the new sunshine and rain that we've been getting. And um, yeah, just looking really good. Yeah, so we've got a little bell pepper here. There's a couple other ones starting to, to sprout. Now this guy here, I had to trim him back. I had to chop him right here because what was happening is that he was, um, he was tall. He was about as tall as this one over here. So he was tall up here and there were all these leaves growing up here, but then the stalk was pretty much bare except for these, you know, ones branching off. Well, once I chopped it off, all of these ones down here, um, which is why we prune, all of these ones down here really started to um, thrive and do a lot better. And that's what we want because that's gonna build the strength of our plant. I have some more uh, sugar snap peas growing right here, just a random placement for them. And I'm gonna start kind of as they grow, like twining them around that pole. Now this pepper plant is not a bell pepper plant and I'm not 100% sure what kind of pepper plant it is because when I bought it, it was marked as a bell pepper. Last spring, it was full grown. It was huge, um, Had gave off these really beautiful long chili, kind of like pepperoncini type chilies that would get to like four inches long. Um, but then the frost got to most of it. So what I ended up doing was just chopping it way back and then it came back as the weather started to warm. So I'm really happy about that. But again, it's, you know, it's making a comeback. It's not there yet, but hopefully by summer, we'll have some peppers growing. So that's this area. Um, like I was saying over here, this is kind of a sad situation in terms of the basil, but the rosemary is doing really well. But the water, the it's not draining as much as I'd like. We have these holes drilled into the sink all along the perimeter. Plus we have underneath, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but underneath there, there's a spout and that would be like when you attach the plumbing to the sink and the water can come out of there. So there's lots of drainage, but I just think in terms of like, like this basil right here, I had to trim all of this off thinking that maybe this would come back. And if I get down in here close, let's see if I can't like, sometimes you can scrape it to see if it's getting, if it's still green. And yeah, this guy's not. He's not doing so great, so I'm gonna just pull him out. Um, this guy is actually coming back, which is good. I know he's very small and humble, but he's making a comeback right now, so that's good. <laughs> Same thing for this, like, oh gosh, hang in there, buddy, because things are gonna get better. And then we've got this one that I think he'll be fine too. Um, let me pull that little 
big leaf off. The thing about plants like this, and especially basil, they like to be kept four inches from the ground. You wanna clip them um, at one of their nodes once they make it to four inches above the ground so that they can spread horizontally as opposed to vertically. The more vertically they spread, the less um, kind of sumptuous and uh, aromatic the leaves become. And so you wanna keep them nice and, and robust. So those are my humble basils. Now down here, these are my tomatoes. Um, oh, things are really brightening up. That sun keeps peeking out of the clouds, which is nice. Okay, so here we have some tomatoes um, behind these. I keep these here because our cat lives outside and I don't want him crawling. He doesn't use this as a litter box exactly. Like that's That would be terribly gross, but he will get into it and sleep in here if I don't have those things up, so. Anyway, tomato plants, here we are. These guys, I bought them as seedlings, so they were very, very small um, seedling plants that I planted here with the center post. I added the center post after I planted them, and as they've been growing, I've been reattaching the tie to the, the centermost stalk of the tomato plant to encourage it to grow up the post here. So they're doing really well like that, and I've done it that way for all of these. And then on the outside, or I guess I should say the perimeter of the bed, I have these sugar snap pea vines growing, which I'm gonna encourage to kind of crawl up these uh, trellises here. So here's my other tomato. They were all roughly the same size when I purchased them, but some of them were slightly larger. I'm gonna come in this way so you can gonna get, a, get a picture of it from inside. They're doing great, really beautiful. You can already see that we have some blossoms uh, right over here really pretty and then we got some strawberries right here strawberry it's important so these are nice and damp right now um, but strawberries you don't want them to be too wet you want them to stay damp at most and so it's, it's kind of like and you can see we have lots of little baby strawberries coming which is a lot of fun but um it's a challenge you got to make sure you don't overwater those and then here's some more tomatoes I'll come in at this angle you can see that they're attached to that central post in each case and they're doing great. And then the last little uh, area of strawberries. And we have one little, little tiny guy here. But spring is here, so these guys are going to start flourishing. Now over here, the rest of my outside area, is it, some of it is still looking pretty sparse just because it, it is just beginning to be spring. Um, but otherwise things are starting to really green up. Now this is rose. Beautiful red roses grow here. You can see this beautiful rose right here. Let's see if I can get in there. Yeah, it's such a beautiful color. Um, I have some really intense stalks beginning to sprout, like this one right here um, is kind of beginning to, you know, stand up to attention, I guess. Um, really beautiful. So this is kind of just a little bed that my son and I created for the roses and planted it there with a trellis so it can climb up. This guy survived the frost and we had a pretty hardy frost. <laughs> so this guy really uh, pulled through and did, um, did great throughout the really cold season that we had. This is just a potted ice plant and then there's some purple daisies in there. Um, this ice plant isn't doing that great and I'm not exactly sure well, I don't know if it's not that it's not doing great, but it has this doppled look to the to the leaves here. I think what I'm going to end up doing is just trimming all of this way back and then controlling the water because you really don't want to overwater an ice plant because it's a succulent. Um, but it is starting to bloom, so that's a good sign. So I might have to trim that back. Okay, now this is kind of like, I don't know. I mean, this is a grapefruit tree. I want to get it planted into the ground. Um, you can see there's going to be lots of little blossoms popping up here. But it's just in this really, really big pot for right now. And I just don't think that that's ideal for a tree at this stage. We've had this for about two, three years now. So my problem is, though, is how do I transplant that without breaking the pot? And I have a feeling we would have to break the pot and then take it out of the pot and transplant it into the ground. My son must have stuck this in here. It's one of our old broken... Uh, solar lights but um 
yeah, so not exactly sure how we're gonna do that. But inside the pot, I have snapdragons that are just about to begin um, sending off some new blossoms, really beautiful. And then I'm not sure what this is. It almost looks to me like oleander. And if that is the case, I wanna get rid of it because oleander is very poisonous. Um, and you know what, it might be that that's what that is, which is really strange. I don't know why oleander would be growing in here. We did have an oleander plant once last summer that we got rid of. Maybe it just, I don't know, maybe it's starting to grow here. These are uh, petunias that are gonna begin growing. But yeah, this is crazy. Strange to see that pop up. We have some more strawberries growing over here. And then over here, another interesting situation. So last spring, my boys and I planted seeds. Another one of our solar lights. I think they're just sticking them randomly. Um, my boys and I planted some seeds in random places just because they wanted to plant broccoli. My kids love broccoli, which I'm, that's a blessing. So they planted a bunch of broccoli seeds in what was otherwise a lemon tree pot. And so now you can see the lemon is also a very old plant. We've had this for very, a very long time, but it's not doing so great. And the reason why is because the broccoli has gone completely crazy and is probably taking up most root space inside this planter. So I need to think about what I'm gonna do about that because I love the broccoli. You can see we're getting really yummy broccoli and the boys will come over here and pop these off and eat them right off of the plant, which is cool. That's actually why I plant what I plant. So I have strawberries, tomatoes, broccoli, um, sugar snap peas, because those are things that they can pick off and eat out here. Um, you can see new little things are starting to happen here, but I don't really know what to do. I feel like, I mean, I'm seeing that the lemon tree does have things preparing to bloom but I would really like to get this lemon tree thriving again and it's probably gonna have to be another situation where I break the pot and separate out what's in here and transplant things but I don't know I'm gonna have to think on that so anyway broccoli and then coming over here just some desert landscape type stuff and then another pot with some humble bean sprouts or sugar snap peas these were planted as seeds by my boys and they're doing well. And I actually also planted marigolds in these pots because marigolds are a great flower to have um, to prevent bugs and they're beautiful. And you can save their uh, flowers after they've dried and fallen off and you can use them to dye yarn. Pretty cool, I haven't done that yet, but I plan to. Some more marigolds here, sugar snap peas. Sugar snap peas, which I need to get some kind of a trellis thing going in here, but these guys are doing really well asparagus ferns i love asparagus ferns especially here in the desert only because they don't require much water they're very easy to maintain you can trim them back easily and they puff up and bloom beautifully really quickly a great uh great alternative to add color to your yard without having to worry about high maintenance this right here is a blackberry shrub now i think that the, now this guy completely succumbed to the frost just to the point of almost freezing like he turned purple he became hard I trimmed him way back he looked like just a dry stump in this pot for the longest time but after fertilizing and you know continuing to keep him watered he came back but the only thing is is I think that this kind of plant needs to have another blackberry plant to help pollinate it I'm not I don't know if that's the right terminology but I think it needs to have another plant with it so i'm considering trying to find another blackberry plant soon to plant together in the same pot we'll have to transplant this one but not 100 percent sure snapdragons are going nuts um look at this <laughs> they're beautiful they're almost overhanging the pot absolutely gorgeous i love snapdragons especially when you have little kids because so you can take the little flower off and then when you squeeze the sides it opens like this. That's why they call them snapdragons. And you can put them on your kid's nose and they love it or on their fingers. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, my snapdragons doing really well. I have some Elysium growing down here to kind of fill in the pot in places. I like to take pots and just stick them in the ground like that where they kind of stick out sideways. I just think it's, I don't know, looks cute. Over here, not 100% sure what we call this, but it gives off these beautiful, um, flowers here love it and it's a great filler it's really filled in a lot since uh, the warm weather has come and the watering has kind of or the rain has 
been pretty heavy. And then, oh, we have petunias over here. This was not replanted. So none of these flowers that I'm showing you right now have been replanted except for, well, they're not flowers, but the beans, the sugar snap peas were planted as seeds. Everything else um, has been here. Also, except for the vegetables, those were replanted at the beginning of um, the season. But the flowers were are here and have been here for a long time. Um, they've just kind of been coming and going as the seasons have changed. Another asparagus fern, another asparagus fern. This one's been around for ages. We've had this in our family. My mom gave this to me when we moved in here three years ago. She had had it for like three years. So this is a, an oldie, but great. And then over here, kind of like bordering the kids play area and you can see how much rain and pollen we've had this. Sandbox cover is always clean and we've like we keep this nice over here But we've had so much rain and pollen that it's accumulating all this um, water and ugh, yellow pollen. It needs to be cleaned off But we have these little trees here that we set up to kind of separate out the kids space um, from the yard and also speaking of that this is a little garden so when we got this big old sandbox over here which is really cool when you take the cover off of it it's such a cool sandbox um we used we decided to use this one for the kids so they could plant their own vegetable garden which they did so all of this was planted from seeds so we have now that looks like broccoli which is strange because this is supposed to be green onions this is broccoli <laughs> and this is uh carrots but I think some of my, I think my kiddos might have planted some rogue broccoli seeds around here. But that's okay. But it's a lot of fun because things are growing. Like our carrots are starting to sprout. Our green onions are starting to do something over here. And it's a lot of fun. So it's kind of cool for them to come out here and monitor this every once in a while um, in their own little space. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so, and then our lawn. We are in the process of rehabbing our lawn right now, which is always kind of a challenge. Um, this <laughs> my boys have matching lawn mowers. And so it kind of looks like this is, this is what we're using to rehab our lawn, guys. I'm just kidding. The kids have matching Husqvarna lawn mowers that they absolutely love to use. Um, okay, so over here, so another plant that I really love is this bougainvillea. Now this guy, so before it was planted in a much smaller container because it used to be smaller and so I had it in a small container. Well, it's grown. It's become, it's really starting to come back. Like a week ago, there was, there were no leaves up here, no flowers. It was kind of like there were some leaves down here, but otherwise it was just kind of not looking great. And now it's really starting to come back. It's crawling up the window. Um, very cool, really loving this uh, bougainvillea. They're beautiful in, in the summertime and they're really great to have in a desert climate when you don't get a lot of rain because they're um, pretty drought resistant and so really awesome. I have another one over here. So we'll head over this way. And we have one right outside my son's window which is absolutely beautiful. Ugh, I love it so much. I we haven't opened his window yet but when we do, it's always nice to kind of have this beautiful pop of fuchsia right out the, right out of the window. But just look at these colors, like, holy moly, so beautiful. I love it so much. Okay, so that is what we have out in the yard, but we also have our own little like patio, kind of hanging garden deal going on. We've had a lot of wind, so there's kind of debris all over right now, but um, let's, let me show you what I have growing on my patio. So, We'll come over here so you can see the vegetable garden over there. We've got some strawberries going over here. Lots of little things that can be picked and eaten. We have lots of little strawberries starting to, starting to come. We, I, we actually picked a couple red ones off this morning, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, strawberries. Just a random petunia over here. This is jasmine, and my goodness, when this thing begins to blossom, it smells amazing out here. So we have our jasmine. And then up here, just some hanging potted plants with random flowers. And there we have some alyssium, some petunias. This, again, I'm not exactly sure what that's called. It's a filler plant. And then over here, same situation, but this one we have some marigolds going. Um, again, marigolds keep your bugs at bay. And these are a beautiful, rich orange marigold color. So if I do decide to keep the, the dried buds and use them for practicing some natural dyeing, um, they're gonna give off a beautiful orangey yellow. We got another asparagus fern over here, easy green. And then this is my little mini succulent collection. Let's see, my dad put this little planter together for me. And I love it. And of course my son, 
came out here and decorated it with some pipe cleaners. You know, like, like you do. And then another petunia going on over here with some marigolds. Come over here, spinning balloon. And then we have, starting to get a little darker under the patio, which is not surprising, I suppose. And there we go, some more hanging plants. And that's where Oscar lives. Okay, so then we come, oh, we have an African honeysuckle, which is really getting crazy. Like, look at this guy. Here, let's see if I can. Yeah, he's very tall, beautiful. We have little orange honeysuckle flowers starting to, starting to blossom here. And then, let's see. Oh, and then yeah, last but not least, hanging out here is another um, asparagus fern. I like to kind of separate, so this is our patio arrangement. Um, when you come outside, it's kind of a, you can hear my boys playing behind me, our patio arrangement. But then my husband has his um, Traeger smoker and his grill over here. And I like to kind of try to separate the space somewhat visually with the little settee and the asparagus fern. We do what we can. And then we have some nice lights. Um, I'll have to come out here and show you what it looks like at night. What are you doing? An ouchie. You have an ouchie? Oh, well, let me. Oh, goodness. You really do have an ouchie, bud. What happened? It's open. It's okay. It's just, you just scraped it. There you go. All better. You're welcome. You guys want to come out and mow the lawn? I come in. Why don't you open the door so you guys can fit? Ronan, do you want to mow the lawn? No. No? You got Teddy? I'm fluff. Yeah? Choo-choo. Choo-choos, okay. Oh, okay. All right. It's a little chilly outside. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Yeah, so that's what we have. That's our... That's our little situation out here. I love it so much. I um I do have some things I need to work on out front, um, but otherwise I'm really just excited about the spring and what it means for all the plants and the color and the green. Ah, uh, yeah. So there we go. All right. So I think what I'm gonna do today. I'm not gonna do much in the garden today because everything I watered last night and things are still damp. I think I'm gonna go inside and kind of sort out what I need to do my sourdough starter. 